There is a major, a major macro breakout actually brewing. In fact, one of the major areas that we were looking at um, for the total three is in question as of right now, meaning that in the next 18 hours, 10 minutes, and 41 seconds, there might just be a confirmation of a macro breakout, and that is going to have major implications for the overall market. Of course, we'll revisit Bitcoin as well, even be looking at a little bit of uh, Solana Bitcoin as uh, yesterday's analysis has already played out, and maybe if things get really, really crazy, we'll look at something else. Anyways, other than that, I want to welcome you back to the Air Crown Crypto channel. It's a nice little Sunday morning over here. Let's just jump right into it. Starting off first with the content of the day with Total 3. So Total 3 is the total mark cap um, of, of the cryptocurrency landscape uh, minus or just taking out Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all of like the dollar, tether, derivatives, those sort of things, stable coins, basically. Anyways, in this case, several things are happening right here. So we last visited this chart, I believe it was last week, or maybe it was even earlier this week. And we said that, hey, this one is on a watch list as of right now because it is going to represent the greater altcoin market and versus the US dollar. It is looking like not only is there a higher low being printed in right here, on very, very high term timeframes, both the weekly and the monthly, that is actually. But two, there is a weekly breakout actually emerging um, in the more near term upon t potentially tonight's closure. So in this case, it is going to have a chance to close back above the April 2023 highs. That would be a successful reversal in this case, as we do see, well, higher highs and higher lows. You know, we do see low right here. Low, higher low right here, higher low right here. Here's your last high, and this one has a chance to close on a new high. Thus, the next thing that must follow is a higher high. And because we do have a little bit of a technical formation right here, this was a bit of an ascending triangle. There technically is an, an, an inverted measured move or implied target to be made from that, which does point up a little bit north towards about, uh, close to 500 billion overall. Doesn't mean it's going to hit there like exactly from this, ex you know, th this moment or this next week or even this next month. But overall, that would be a, you know, that that would be a legitimate area of interest um, in the coming months, as that also does line up with the 382 Fibonacci retracement right here. But again, really depends on tonight's closure. Assuming that uh, total three does again close above the April highs, where it was in the very low 400 billions, um, which it's actually currently above right now, then yes, I would be looking for this one to kind of trade its way upwards and onwards over the next couple months, generally joining the rest of the cryptocurrency um, uh, rally, meaning that you know most altcoins will rally, not all. All of them, of course, there's going to be some absolute dog shit coins that just do nothing because they do nothing. Um, then again, doing nothing in the cryptocurrency world is actually like a it's like a badge of honor. Um, I've seen some of the craziest rallies in these just absolute uh, worthless vaporware type things, and fair enough. I, you know, I don't blame people for, for, for playing into it. can make you rich, I suppose, um, especially with, you know, lower levels of, uh, of equity. But, you know, it's kind of like playing with fire. It's a dumpster fire. You know, it's, it could be it's, it's equal parts heaven and equal parts dumpster fire hell. Um, you know, it can go either way. Uh, but in general, most altcoins should be putting in macro lows here is what this would essentially be suggesting. So what does that mean for the greater market? It means, you know, this is one of those times at least where I kind of remember, where you look at the chart for whatever your favorite shitcoin is, hopefully a, a more a more new one, um, and it's just all right. Uh, maybe a position here doesn't uh, doesn't doesn't make that much not sense. <laughs> In other words, um, you know a lot. Of, okay, I'll just give my personal experience with this. Uh, you know, from cycle to cycle, and we and I've seen a, a, a few cycles now. Um, there's always that time near the end of a cycle, you know, when things are kind of reaching their highs, like this area over here in November 2021, most recently, where I'll look at some of the shit coins and I'll just be like, you know, if I just bought here, if I theoretically just bought here, um, you know, like a year earlier, and I didn't even really look at the chart and just said, hey, it's a macro breakout, let's get long. Didn't really have to do all that much and uh, and just had to really wait for the next six months to a year and a half. And, well, the market did return um, quite generously, let's say. So, um, you know, if, if you are that type of person looking for those more long-term plays, maybe it's not the worst area to be getting in. 
Um, of course, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. That's just my opinion. Um, and in this case, it uh, doesn't mean that there's going to be pullbacks. In fact, you know, coming into a region like this, there probably will be a short-term pullback, certainly. Um, but uh, higher-term timeframes, you know, are setting in uh, higher lows and likely drives of continuation here as a reversal does complete. So again, don't get this confused with like a four-hour time frame or even a daily time frame right here. Um, you know, it's the weekly that I'm looking at and the monthly as well that are the big ones. And there is something of significant interest here on the weekly as we do see, you know, the lowest levels of volatility for the longest times, which I've been saying on a lot of different charts now. Naturally, they do kind of, you know, coincide with each other. But uh, realistically, this is, I mean, th this, this is even more severe in the most recent uh, consolidation between 2023 and, and 2024 um, than what we did see back on over in 2019 to 2020. Um, this one longer, or sorry, yeah, longer and also just generally lower during that period. So it does imply that the result will be more severe. Um, in this case, you know, volatility expansion looks like it will favor the upside. We also see that weekly RSI is getting into the bullish controls and for the first time since, uh, freshly for the first time since, you know, August of 2021, you know, I just marked off this area over here that was coming off of um, the summer slump from the last cycle and uh, Bitcoin, no, the general market made new highs from there. And the time before that was back on over here in June of 2020, where, you know, the run really got started. So, you know, long term, yeah, there does seem to be a change into the guard here. Um, on the macro scale, this is not just like a micro rally. Um, again, there will be pullbacks, certainly on the lower term timeframes. They probably happen sooner rather than later. You know, looking at the daily right here, it is getting pretty extended. Um, so asking for even a short term pullback relatively soon is not, you know, that crazy as we go into the next chart. But ultimately, higher term timeframes, yeah, are setting in. And well, I would say, uh, again, pullbacks are likely opportunities for major higher lows. Um, anyways, moving on to the next chart. So yesterday we were looking at Solana. We've actually looked at Solana a couple times in the past uh, week or so now. Uh, we had a major area of interest here for Solana versus Bitcoin um, in this blue box territory. It looks like it just brushed up against there yesterday and well, you know, selling off from that region. So, you know, does it brush up against this region yet again, maybe aim a little bit higher towards 18,000 uh, 18, Satoshis? It's possible, yes, but ultimately this one is ready for a bit of a sideways consolidation and probably does trade uh, sideways and down, setting in a range somewhere between like 15,000 Satoshis and the highs are like 18,000 Satoshis. Um, long term, still, I think, generally good. But uh, in the short term, you know, I do think that barring one more try for like a slightly higher high, uh, the short term rally is likely done and it goes into a consolidation setting up for, you know, a continuation of that consolidation, probably maybe around end of year or, or, or early into 2024. I think that things are really setting in here. Um, anyways, moving on from there, what else do we have? Um, 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 I am looking at what else do I want to look at? Uh, I guess we could visit this. I mean, people have been loving the Oracle Pro, which is pretty funny. Um, just, it's just one of those things that like, I don't know. People love buy and sell signals, and this one has them and has them aplenty. Uh, just on the total three chart, I did forget to mention that there was a pretty big buy signal um, as the rally really started to emerge for total three in late October. Um, this one's still going. It's just waiting for that closing uh, signal. Um, we can see in the past, it's been okay. Some 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 trades were 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 basically washes. Some were significant gains, but this one over here is the one that I'm most interested in as of right now. Just you know, kind of uh, coinciding with the earlier analysis. Um, and uh, and moving on from there, I think it's time to get into some Bitcoin action. So actually, I'll just go over here. Boom. Okay. Four hour for Bitcoin. We did call out the uh, the strong signal over here on the Oracle. Um, this was on Wednesday. It is still going strong as well. And I should just, you know, make note that as long as Bitcoin's above this yellow moving average, which is just a 20 simple, you know, this will remain green and it will suggest that there's one more push to the upside. Um, of course, we can reference the range statistics on top of that. And for Sunday, it is literally a coin toss in terms of uh, bullish closures versus bearish closures at 50%, meaning that 50% uh, of literally all closures for Bitcoin throughout the history of Bitcoin have, well, been positive or, 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 or negative with an average return of about 1.5% on both sides. Um, so, you know, if we just put like numbers on that for today, if we were to see something like that, 1.5% to the upside would put Bitcoin at about 37,700. 1.5% to the downside would put Bitcoin at about 36. 
536, 600. Um, like I said before, I personally uh, still favor the upside. Again, as, as long as Bitcoin is on the four above that twenty simple, which is uh, just below thirty-seven thousand um, bucks. And uh, in looking at one of our other charts over here, the HPDR bands, you know, I do think that uh, that Bitcoin probably has one more push to the upside here too before it goes into a prolonged consolidation um, sideways and a little bit down. But you know, that next eighty percent of historic returns range high is just under forty thousand bucks. Might as well be forty thousand um, bucks. I think that would be a pretty damn good area. It does correlate quite well with the five-day time frame volatility versus stochastic momentum analysis over here. That would start to be around the average move that we do typically see for this, which is about 42%. Um, again, taken from where that setup did occur. Yeah, that would actually, let me actually get this right. That would probably be good. <laughs> um, you know, that would put Bitcoin yeah, at about 40,000 40, bucks to maybe even maybe even just above 40,000 um, bucks. And looking at the timing of this, you know, we're going to start to work our way into day number 30 here. So, you know, it's it's actually right on schedule with the average amount of days taking about 30 to 35. So, you know, is there one more push? I actually still do think yes, based off of that daily time frame. Um, volatility is looking like it wants to expand here. I'm just going off of the moving average. Um, you know, we are starting to see some higher lows on that on volatility, which does imply to me that this move is still probably trending from here. As long as we still see the moving average on this remain with that positive slope. So that's, if that starts to curl around, okay, that's wrong. Or it's not that's wrong. It's just that's new information and that says, hey, uh, this is this is going into a consolidation, like a more prolonged consolidation minimum, maybe reversal. Um, but as far as directional volatility goes with the HPDRO, it still ma maintains its positive curvature. So I still remain biased towards the upside um, in the more near term. I think that Bitcoin has one more push here, probably over the next week or two. It's been pretty much on schedule as far as what we were looking at. We were looking at this rally to find its highs in like middle of November, maybe even late November, but probably middle of November. And we're almost in middle of November now. So I think there's maybe one more move to the upside here. Um, and then we probably start, probably start to see this market go into a more prolonged consolidation and set up for, you know, continuation or, or the next major move, likely in like maybe late December, early January. That's probably what I'd be looking at. So I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off on this particular video. Again, big news with the uh, total three, just long-term alts in general, not all of them, not all of them, of course, and probably biased towards the more new ones, I would imagine as well, are gonna be doing okay um, over the long term, setting in those macro higher lows. And uh, Bitcoin probably still has one more extension on this rally, and then I'd be looking for a much more prolonged consolidation and then we'll come back to it after that. Anyways, that's a good place for me to be leaving off. As always, I want to wish you the best best. You can find all that information about these indicators that I went over here in the in the uh, links in the description below. That's enough shilling for today, if you can even call it that at this point. <laughs> and, and I'll sign off on that note. As always, wish you the best best. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully tomorrow for Monday. <laughs>